This video demonstrates the power of the new innovative VE Navigator for UK Compliance 2010 from IES. The concept of the tool is to navigate you through the PowerTel 2010 Compliance Analysis Procedure quickly and easily. There's a navigator for the free VESBEM or paid for VE Dynamic Simulation Method tools. So let's get started. When the product has been purchased or is being trialled, you'll see it in the list of compliance navigators available in the Navigator tab. I'll choose the VE Dynamic Simulation Method Navigator to work with for this demonstration. The Dynamic Simulation tool allows designers greater flexibility than SPEM, particularly when it comes to the stringent changes made in the Part L 2010 regulations. The geometry will have already been defined using the Geometry section navigators. The geometry can be created using the Modelit module or by importing a model created by another program such as SketchUp or Revit for example. General model data will already have been set using the data section navigators. So we move down to the DSM settings section to set the model up specifically for Part L 2010 compliance analysis using the dynamic simulation method. You can see the navigator is laid out in a detailed step-by-step -step structured workflow which streamlines the process and ensures no step is missed. As you click on a link, the workflow automatically calls up the relevant dialog boxes in the software. For example, we can choose the set location link and set the location of the building. Another great facility of the navigator is the ability to add and share notes which can be used to track team progress. We can also timestamp the notes for quality assurance purposes. There are also some helpful guidance notes. We then led to the DSM construction section. This brings you through a list of checks you can do to ensure your constructions are set up as they should be for Part L 2010 compliance. You can click on the Open Database link and view your constructions and work through the list of checks listed in the Navigator. Each of the subsequent sections of the Navigator follow a similar format to this. Next we will look at the DSM template section of the Navigator where you can check the templates we've assigned to the model. We can make final tweaks to the rooms using the steps laid out in the DSM room data section of the wizard. We'll come back to this section later. We now move to the compliance analysis section where we can work through the list of items to make sure we don't miss anything so the building is set up for its first compliance run. Click here to run the simulations. I've shortened the calculation time for demonstration purposes. The building fails, so we need to make some adjustments to the design. To help us to do that, we move into the Tools section. In the Tools section, we can identify the dominant issues for improvement, which is really helpful. We can just click on the link and the dominant issues are highlighted. In this case, we can see the dominant issue is lighting. We can also see there are some suggested design remedies that you can investigate. For lighting, we can improve the lighting control and incorporate some daylight dimming. We can also change the design to incorporate some more efficient light fittings. To investigate this further, we can look at the key input comparisons and see how the actual building inputs look compared to the notional building. I can then look at my design for the lighting and put in more efficient lighting and input the updated figures into the software. I do this by using the room data section of the navigator to make my tweaks to the model. We go back to the compliance analysis section and rerun the analysis.
This time the building passes the compliance check.